Hello guys. How I hope your lessons are going good. So we're going to discuss high speed flight. So high speed flight is actually a very very um, a, a big concept actually but uh, I'll be discussing here the key important points that will help you understand the fundamentals exactly what's happening. All right, so first thing we need to know is the local speed of sound local speed of sound so the speed uh, of propagation of small pressure waves depends on the temperature only all right so the speed of sound is dependent on temperature only and this is given by a formula 39 root t where t is in kelvin okay and the speed that comes out LSS is in knots All right. so temperature the local speed of sound is dependent only on temperature All right. at mean sea level sea level speed of sound is given as 661 knots or 340 meter per second okay now the point here to notice as height increases all right temperature of course decreases so your LSS will also decrease so this is important thing to know also you should know that crossing tropopause or the troposphere where the temperature is constant troposphere sorry the crossing troposphere the tropopause where in the stratosphere where the temperature is constant the local speed of sound will be at a constant value all right so the graph after uh, just for your knowledge the graph goes like suppose this is your altitude altitude of the climbing and this is your say temperature so the temperature will obviously decrease and your local speed of sound so let us take local let let this be local speed of sound and this be temperature so as your temperature is decreasing the local speed of sound will also decrease and when you reach the stratosphere here it will become constant all right this is local speed of sound so anyway that is just for your information not very keen point now there is something called mark number which is a function and it's a ratio of local speed of sound by TAS true air speed of the aircraft I will give you 39 using this here 39 root T by TAS okay so Mach number is measured by a Mach meter which will be dealt in a, a separate video in instruments hopefully I'll be making that soon as well so now there's something called as a critical Mach number critical Mac number and that is written as M crit. Now this is a very very important value in high speed flight. You know the whole thing revolves around this. So first we'll just note down a few points here. So the free stream Mac num what is M crit is what I'm defining here. This free stream Mac number at which local velocity this is important term local velocity first reaches Mach 1 is M crit so the whole aircraft will immediately together as a whole not reach Mach 1 that is what so M crit is a, a limiting Mach number where only some part of the aerofoil say maybe the wing at the uh, you know at the trailing edge or I mean so at the leading edge the local velocity there reaches Mach 1 that Mach number is called M crit and that local Mach number is always greater than your free stream Mach number okay now just a property M crit will decrease with increase in T by 
C ratio and angle of attack so m crit so the Mach number value will decrease so T by C is basically thickness by the chord right so this if you increase that your m crit will decrease and if you increase your angle of attack as well your m crit will also decrease okay so if T by C ratio is greater then LSS will be higher this implies M crit will decrease all right this is just a point exam point of view it might just help you so if T by C ratio is greater then LSS will be increased all right the local speed of sound if your thickness to the chord ratio is greater it's a big ratio then your LSS will be higher so that the, then your end crit will be reduced all right so now there's an important concept called shock wave in high speed flight shock wave so it's linked to basically uh, M crit only if you if has to say so I'll just draw an aerofoil here all right so now shock wave is a boundary like this hold on I'll just draw with another sketch so it's a boundary where so what exactly is happening is don't really uh, you know get confused by what what shock wave is it's a simple concept so just I'll just write it down when a supersonic wave is immediately changed to subsonic without a change in direction a shock wave is formed it is as simple as that so basically sub this is your subsonic wave and it becomes supersonic say here somewhere here all right so this area is supersonic so this this area here is supersonic and it is suddenly after this point it becomes sonic or subsonic this is your shock wave uh, it's a boundary that separates supersonic and subsonic and it is when a supersonic wave is immediately you know changed to subsonic without changing direction the direction has not changed but it becomes subsonic a shock wave a boundary is formed to create that difference so here it will be less than m1 mach 1 here at this this shaded region that i've colored here it will be greater than mach 1 here it will obviously be less than mach 1 so this is your this is your shock wave okay it's just a definition you have to know that's all and uh, one important point here is at m crit there is no shock wave it is after that it crosses m crit the shock wave forms rare of the supersonic airflow understood just supersonic rare of the supersonic airflow this is the shock wave that is formed now I'm going to give you a um, good way to remember effect of shock waves many uh, books uh, including Oxford and all will have a in-depth detail and uh, you know everything of that sort you can please kindly refer to that obviously but just to remember what is the effect of shock waves over the you know aerofoil or whatever just the velocity decreases rest pressure temperature and LSS increase only the velocity effect of what what happens to the shock wave over the aerofoil the velocity decreases the pressure temperature and local speed of sound will increase all right now what why why is shock wave important to us why why do we need a i mean need to understand the concept of shock wave because shock wave suppose shock wave what it will do is when you increase 
MAC number CP will move rearward so shock wave is an indication for us it's you know a limiting indication that we are approaching you know Mach 1 speed supersonic speed it's just the whole this is just a local velocity right so the whole aerofoil up is approaching Mach 1 is what it means and that will cause a CP mo uh, movement behind now this what it does is suppose the CG is here CP is here and the CP moves back so there will be a nose down tendency alright there will be a nose down tendency this is called Mac tuck we'll, I'll discuss that in a minute Mac tuck this will ca cause a nose down tendency okay so now with as the Mac number increases further Mac number increasing further shock wave becomes thicker thicker and then it will have more effect on the aerofoil and a lot of buffeting will happen so this will you know too much airflow separation and your aircraft may just stall if it is not taken care of I just drawn in advanced a diagram uh, I mean diagrams of aer um, aerofoil how it is affecting so normally your uh, CP is here your velocity basically you're approaching Mach number and uh, suddenly there's a shock wave that is formed your CP starts to move behind and it moves behind that the shock wave is just reached the trailing edge all right so now the, from the trailing edge what happens when you just hit mac 1 you remember m crit you, there is no shock wave all right so we are approaching mac 1 slowly and as you approach mac 1 that is mac m1 here cp is moved so much that there is a, some, a phenomena called bow wave that is formed ahead of the aircraft if you have seen uh, images on google or anywhere just just google bow wave so in front of the aircraft so suppose this is the aircraft from the front just this is happening in case of an aerofoil I'm talking in case of fighter jets if you can see there will be some white cloudish formation this is called your bow wave it, this is due to its you know crossing crossing the sound barrier basically M1 so this causes bow wave and when you further approach Mach 1.3 and 1.4 the supersonic speeds then the, the bow wave will attach to the aerofoil and your CP will move way aft and the shock wave will be at a trailing edge alright so this you can just have a look on the images on uh, Google so that you understand what a bow wave looks like it's a very common phenomena for aircraft flying over Mach 1 because these days commercial aircraft anyways do not fly uh, at Mach 1 but uh, the fighter jets you might just uh, have a look at alright so now yeah so the point I was telling was this uh, Mac tuck so both CP and AC aerodynamic center or where the lift is acting will be aft to the 50% chord position just as I showed you in the previous page and bow waves attach at 1.3 and 1.4 and it will be the CP will be quite aft this is the 50% mark it's aft of your chord position alright now we need by we were discussing about M crit and Mac tuck I'll just mention why why do we need to know about M crit and why we shouldn't fly at it now this is what I was talking about CP moves rearwards as you approach you know Mach 1 and M crit and further speeds M crit Mach 1 and supersonic speeds so this will give you a nose down movement since your CP is moving behind this is this is CG or AC whatever CP so if this is moving behind the arm is increased and this will cause a nose down movement if this is an aerofoil okay so this will cause a nose down movement and this is called Mac and it needs to be prevented you don't want to be flying nose down all right so this is prevented by mac trim how do we achieve mac trim mac trim a elevator up of course the simplest is going down you just elevator up decrease tail plane incidence 
so at the tail plane you uh, decrease the tail plane incidence at the uh, rearward tail plane so that will cause again uh, what you call the movement of the nose to be up or simple move CG rearward not very practical but if it is possible that is also another thing and at at high Mac number Mac trim adjusts the longitudinal trim so basically your longitudinal trim is adjusted by the Mac trim system so it is it's a very um, complex uh, system that actually works on without notice of the pilot so that's how you can do this so let us just quickly discuss two types of wings here thin wing what happens so any reduction of wing thickness will increase m crit resulting in the reduced lss and therefore your m crit is increased all right so the, now the now the thing thin wing concept it will help you increase m crit so suppose you you have a thin wing if you have a thicker wing and if you have a thinner wing okay so now your m crit on this will be higher okay and this is because the flow of speed uh, flow of the air, air flow over this will be much smoother so your m crit you can fly faster but disadvantages are obviously less lift because the pressure differential won't help this and uh, lift reduced uh, fuel storage you cannot carry more, uh, a lot of fuel in this and also the structural uh, you know integrity or and weight of this is not really uh, weight is fine but the uh, structural integrity because it's a thin wing thin wing and you cannot carry a lot of load now here comes the helping guy swept wing honestly swept wing has a lot of disadvantages but m crit is the only reason that the swept wing wing is used so it positively increases m crit okay so big why why does this happen now since your effective so suppose you have a normal wing like this this is a rectangular wing and you have a swept back wing i hope you know what the swept back wing looks like okay so now what this is doing is your in effective cord has increased all right the cord has increased this this is just a cord like this okay this is just much but your effective cord here is a lot more it's almost a bigger length than this double say just for example it's a good double this has reduced your t by c ratio which reduces lss which increases m crit all right so that's all for high speed flight actually it's a it's a it's a big concept but for exam point of view at our level at the cpl level uh, if this knowledge is good enough uh, i think that should be uh, yeah it should suffice what we need to know at the moment and for more, any more doubts you just drop a comment i'll uh, make sure i answer it quickly and also keep referring books a lot uh, i'm and uh, that is the best way to learn stuff and um, yeah that's all then uh, like it and share it if you uh, enjoyed the video i'll see you guys next uh, maybe we'll do limitations v speeds and then we'll do propellers as well and that will do our subsonic aerodynamics. Alright guys, see you. Bye-bye.